everyone, it's your host, Get Good Fox, and welcome back to State of Decay 2 Lethal Zone Beta. Today, it's time for the review. Prescott Fire Station, one of the two largest bases in uh, Providence Ridge. Uh, that makes it kind of interesting on its own. Providence Ridge is a, basically a region that has two eight-man bases, which is interesting. Um, this is a... A curious base. I definitely think that it, it's not it's not as clear cut as other bases, really. Uh, in addition to that, we will be driving around looking for food because one of the things we're doing is we're still doing some still stuff. Still, still doing. We're doing stuff. Anyways, let's take a look at the base. So, base is found in the kind of I guess the bottom left corner. Um, somewhere in this area is where the enig enigmatic axe is. It costs thirty five hundred influence to move in. The standard cost of a level three arrow or a uh, eight man base rather and just gave it away. It's an eight-man base. This is what you're going to be getting, though. Uh, let me get my mouse out. You're going to be looking at, we got two large facilities that are available for your customization and three small facilities. Two of them are outdoor. I'm absolutely taking advantage of that by constructing two stills, which um, stills can only be built in the outdoors. Not sure why, but that's just the way it works. And then you get one indoor for a total of two small, two large outside, and three, two large and three small. And um, that would not be very good on its own. However, you get quite the barrage of permanent built-ins. Remember, you can identify a permanent built-in, as in you can never take it down by its a teal border. And the ones that can be removed will have a brown border. So let's go through what you get. So we've got ourselves right here a storage. It's normal every day. Also, if you're wondering why am I going over this again, I assume that there will be people who only want to see the full review rather than, like, the, you know, both. So, uh, this has been upgraded. It's just a normal storage room. Over here, we got ourselves the normal everyday command center. Not, not a lot going on there. But what we do have is, first up, a oh, scout like a tower. This is basically a watchtower, you know. It's a little bit better than normal. You can put three guards. Uh, you'll note that there is no ammo cost. And there is no... Am I about to get attacked? No, I want to be right in front of the spikes real quick. Okay. Let me crouch as well. So, uh, you're going to notice that there is there are no upkeep costs. And that's just one of the effects of it being built in. No material cost, etc. Yeah. Now, this is an interesting facility right here. So, what we've got here is the emergency services training uh, level 2. It, it starts at level 1 and you can upgrade it. It is basically a enhanced version of a level 2 gym. Uh, in addition to providing the normal stuff that a gym would have, including 20 health, EXP, 25% uh, EXP to cardio and fighting, uh, you do get this. You do have to upgrade it to get the EMT supplies. This means your injuries heal a little bit quicker. It does stack as well with the uh, infirmary. So if you've got an infirmary, that lets you heal from injuries, and this is going to go take you a little bit farther. Uh, how important is that? I, I don't know. It's, I mean, I'm not going to turn. I'm not going to turn it down. But I, I don't think that's like a mind-blowing improvement. Another thing it lets you do is you can learn medicine. You have to have the active character, and you got to be at home. It says right here, must be at the base to use it. It costs three medicine and two hundred influence. It might be cheaper to use on lower difficulties. Not sure, but. It's a way to learn medicine. Me pff, medicine. Medicine. That is pretty relevant uh, if you don't have a medicine character, mainly because both of the medicine skills are really good on Lethal Zone. Uh, surgery really helps you with health and injuries, which is a problem. You can just die on Lethal Zone. And then pathology helps you on uh, plague resistance and making cures more efficiently. So it's actually worth it to have both two medicine characters, one in pathology, one on... Um, uh, surgery. Yeah. That's not Over work. here, we've got the kitchen. Pretty sure this is uh, almost a normal. There's one big difference. I'll also note the lack of uh, daily maintenance requirements. A level two gym would require one building material per day. Not in this case, though. Also, that is really good because most bases should have a gym. A gym is a great facility to have. So, awesome. Scout tower. Emergency services, pretty good. Firehouse kitchen, it's basically a level two kitchen without any uh, construction upkeep, so no minus one materials per day. But it also gets commercial fridges, so 10 extra food storage. You know, it's a kitchen, so I say pfft, 
Over here we got firefighter bunks. You get uh, four beds. Uh, the only reason we're getting three morale is because of the comfy chair. Obviously a white noise machine would be better, but I don't have them. Uh, four beds. <laughs> don't really think much of it. Over here we've got a station bathroom. This is equivalent to a level two latrine. So you get a passive 10 morale for normal flushing toilets. And then over here you've got um, clean the toilets for the temporary bonus. You know, you're going to need to have uh, plumbing to really awaken this. Um... A latrine early in the game is okay, and a plumber does have some okay stat boosts when you max it out, but it's like, it's better than these. I'll put it that way. It's like, it's like, uh, it's not lighting me on fire, but um, this is, however. The Firehouse Workshop, this is like a level three and one quarters workshop because it has basically everything a workshop would have, uh, but you also get industrial grade spares. Fifth, minus 15% to your parts uh, repair cost. Saves you a little bit of parts. It's like, you know, I'm not going to turn it down. I would say it's pretty comparable to Daybreak uh, Workshop because in the Daybreak Workshop, it would repair your uh, weapons over time. So both of them kind of save you parts over time. But, you know, like, you would always want a workshop. So, I mean, it means that you don't have to spend a bajillion parts or go to Daybreak to have a level three workshop. So, hey, I'll take it. Now, this is a feature. Here's the utility room. This is a unique, uh, this is a unique variation of the level three generator. And it's unique because it it is a level three generator, which is where you get this, provide power. one fuel, For one fuel per day, you get constant power. It's the best version of it, technically, because the other versions of the generator, you gotta spend like two fuel. So this one gives you just power, you know, like permanent power as long as you've got one fuel. But in addition to that, it also has, look at this, collect water. So it, in one facility, it has, it has basically the water well and the generator crammed together and to power two facilities in one and it doesn't cost anything to have the water and then you do get a little bit of like you know bonus morale here you know you get uh what, what is it um electric light you know five morale staying hydrated one so six morale all together it does suck if you are on amenities if you have the builder's boon because you're gonna lose one fuel for nothing, basically. It is technically a downgrade in that respect because if this were a level two generator, you could just choose to not feed it any fuel because you wouldn't need it. But in this case, yeah, it's just losing us fuel. We're basically, a way you could think of it is we are trading one fuel per day for six morale. You also get this white noise generator which reduces our zombie threat. I, I just don't care about zombie threat. It's really, it's not important. I, it's not even worth activating because we have to spend 37 parts for it. So yeah, you know, why, why even do it? Anyways, that is... Okay, anyways. What did I choose to build yeah, in this base? I chose to build an infirmary because uh, this will not, this helps you regenerate. It's very slow though. I don't, I don't, you, you don't want to rely on it. it. It's more like it is a bonus on, t uh, let me use this to get his attention real quick. Come here, come here. You want to come here? Here we go. Oh, what's he doing? That's weird. Stop doing that. Why is this happening? They're not supposed to do any of this. This is not, you're interrupting my review. Don't you understand that I got this important review to do? Which part of me reviewing the base do you not understand? Anyways, what I was saying was, the uh, the facilities I chose, you know, I'm gonna have an infirmary. You gotta have an infirmary because, okay, let's say that the EMT thing was capable of healing you, you wouldn't be able to cure um, blood plague. So you still need, an, it is not a replacement for an infirmary. Like, I must, I have to stress that. It's not a replacement for the infirmary. Now, um, for my outdoor facilities, I had my choice of basically either going for one still and a shooting range, or two stills. Now, I need money. Um, once I'm good on money, I could definitely see myself going back to having a single still. But I needed money, so I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna look, look how much stamina I've got. That's plenty of stamina. I don't, I don't need more stamina than that. You know, a little bit of stamina. It's just like icing on the cake at that point. So I'm okay with not having a 
what do you call it, uh, a shooting range giving me that little bit of extra. Oh, it looks like they got that. So that sound effect right there, that mwam noise is the sound of a juggernaut going down. So fortunately, I didn't have to do with it, but that's why we got two stills going on. Look at that, the stills just ended. Stills allowing us to make tons of money on crafting the beer, but the downside is that we are losing a lot of food per day. And, um, you know, that's fine. It just gives me something, and, and I don't have to activate them. We definitely need some food, though, so let's go, let's go hunt for some food in the meantime. In addition to that, I chose, you know, the standard two. Like, two large facilities is kind of the minimum you need to really have a good base because you have access to the trade depot and the lounge. Lounge level three in a trade depot. Mm, chef's kiss. It's, it's, just, it's just what you need. It's just right. That was kind of a jerk thing to do. Okay, so what I want to do uh, in terms of looking for food is let's check some of these areas out because there might be some farmlands out there. I don't know for sure. We'll find out. But, um, what do I think about this base? So now that you've seen what's in the base, what do I think about it? I think that this base is... It's either good or bad, depending on your situation. If you... If you are someone who is using amenities, then this base is probably... Who are these guys? What are these guys doing there? If you're someone who has amenities, then this base is honestly not going to be particularly useful to you. Why? Because it has a lot of wasted facilities, and if you have amenities, it just adds one more wasted facility. That's one of the things, in generally speaking, you can build a better base than Undead Labs can. Because remember, we can't remove those facilities, you're stuck with them. And although bonus facilities can be nice, you can always build a better base than the bonus facilities. And basically, for a base that requires 3,500 influence, we're really not getting anything different than what the way... You know, compare what I built here to the Weston Builder Supply. Weston Builder Supply, basically the same. So, it's just it just doesn't light me on fire from that perspective. Now, if you don't have amenities, if you are playing... Uh, maybe you're farming your boons and you don't have access to amenities, then this base is awesome because for one fuel per day, you're going to get water and power. That's great. So this base is fantastic if you don't have water and power, but this base is awful if you have amenities. That's the way I would say it. So if you, if you are living on this base and you either A, are farming your boons, or perhaps alternatively, maybe you don't like playing with amenities. Maybe you think it's like too OP. Then this is the base to this is the base to go to. This would be the like, this would be a great base in that case. Now, if you're not in that category, then no, I would say this base is. Come on, you guys! Like I just want to loot. You guys are really being jerks right now. I'm just trying to grab some stuff. But yeah, if you do have amenities, I would say just stay in West. And, um, yeah, so that's what, it does make this base pretty interesting in that it can be really good, but it can also be not good. Because it, it is fairly expensive to have to move into this base. You know, 3,500 influence, that's a lot. Um, I mean, it's, it is, like I said, it's a good deal if you need water and power, because, I mean, that's about how much you'd be paying in the event you bought a water watchtower and a power wa power tower, a power outpost and a water outpost. That's about how much you'd be paying anyways. So, you might as well just move into a huge base as well. And also, the cost would be lower. You, you'd still be paying less fuel. So, it's definitely worth it. But, if, like I said, if you don't have, uh, if you do have access to water and power, then mm, not really going to be worth it. All clear. Let me see if we could find some fuel in here. That would be nice. But uh, what about all of the, what about all of those side facilities it has? Honestly, like I said, it does have a lot of built-ins, and that's one of the things that people really love to kind of like get hyped about. Look at all of those built-in facilities. The problem is that a lot of them just throw them in the trash. Like, uh, let, let's bring up the base. This thing here, this thing sucks. If you have a white noise machine, you can make it interesting. It'll give you basically 28 plus 10, like you know, like 38 morale, I guess. Like it's not, 
it's not even going to be that insane. It, it's like, it's not bad. Like, if you have a white noise machine, you're going to get 10 morale times all everyone in your community, and then you're going to get uh, an extra 28 morale. Because that's what... People ask me, like, why don't I build beds? Well, beds, all beds do is cancel a 7 morale loss. That's all beds do. If you don't have a bed, your character loses 7 morale. That's it. it it's not that big of a deal. Uh, you do not need beds to rest. You, you don't need beds to do, like, just about anything. Beds are totally unnecessary. So throw that one in the trash. Then you've got the scout tower. The scout tower also stinks. Why does the scout tower stink? Scout tower stinks because watchtowers stink. They just don't do anything. Like, it's like, you know, some people, like, they get all, like, you know, they start to, like, really agonize over the details of whether or not a watchtower is good or bad. The a watchtower, it just doesn't matter. That's the answer. A watchtower, who cares? It, it's not something to optimize yourself around, and it's not something to... Is he gonna attack me? Here we go. This looks like it's on target. There we go. Okay, we blew him up. The explorers, what do you guys want? Materials for everyone? What is your bonus? Am I about to get attacked by Feral? I have no idea. Let's go get- we'll, we'll give him something. I, I wanted to get some food, but apparently I've got a special delivery to make- Is that another juggernaut? Are you guys kidding me? Oh, it's just the Feral. Okay, it's fine. But you could just throw away the watchtower. Watchtowers, they don't do anything for you. Like, they don't do anything good, they don't do anything bad. They're just like, just, you just completely ignore them. Another facility that's a waste is the kitchen. The kitchen has like some side benefits, such as being able to make energy, uh, energy, energy drinks. The thing about energy drinks is they are a fairly high investment strategy, mainly because you need a lot of stuff to make them work. I mean, let me locate where these infestations are, so in, in case they're right nearby, I'll just squish them real quick. The thing is, like, yeah, you need to have chemistry and you need to have cooking, and to be a little more specific, you have to pick, um, where is it? Right over here? Let's squish that first. Nah, let's deliver the materials before they get mad about me, like, Oh my god, you are not giving me anything that I ever asked for. So, you have to pick nutrition. Nutrition is definitely the weaker of the two cooking skills. And that's because cuisine is really awesome, because cuisine helps you with your economy. And your economy is super important in Lethal Zone. And with nutrition... It allows you to build energy drinks. Energy drinks could be useful if if you have basically if you're at a, if you're at a level of skill where you use a lot of stamina items because like maybe you haven't like mastered your running tactics so that you can play without excessive use of um, stamina items, then maybe it could still have value. But like when you start destroying those play guards, you are going to be getting a lot of energy drinks. You're going to be getting a lot of uh, stimulants. So your stamina issues should be resolved by that. It's, of course, like I said, if you're at if you have not mastered your tactics for running away, because like you can still run away when you're out of stamina. Like don't don't think you can't. If you're getting attacked by a feral when you're out of stamina, and you just need just burn them. Uh, even if you're not using a pyro launcher, just break a um, break a, a, a Molotov on him, and while he's burning, he will have to roll around on the ground to put himself out of fire, and that's going to give you time to move away from him. So, that's those are some of the things that you could do to avoid using so. Also, remember that even if you're out of stamina, if you intentionally set yourself on fire. Uh, not only will you burn everyone who's chasing you, because they're going to move through the fire as well, but then you can perform combat rolls. You can perform combat rolls while you're on fire, which is, once again, another high-mobility tactic you can use. But, otherwise, the other problem is some people are really into rationing. I don't think rationing is very good, because on Lethal Zone, the way you can look at it is that rationing gives you one food per person in your community. So to really ration a significant amount of food, you're going to have to have a very large community. Because let's say you have three people in the beginning of the game. Well, if you enact rationing, 
you're gonna save three food. Well, what you could have done is just establish one food outpost. That would give you two food, and you wouldn't suffer a 45 morale, or a, uh, basically, the, the number 45 comes from the, um, a 30 morale penalty for being on lethal zone, and then a 15 morale penalty for a rationing. So now you'd be down to minus 45 morale. You wouldn't have to deal with that. That wouldn't be an issue. So you wouldn't have people like getting into conflicts. You wouldn't have people like duking it out, fighting with each other to the extent they would. You wouldn't have people like threatening to leave, etc. Because you wouldn't be down 45 morale and you would be saving three food. Now, as you increase in numbers, sure, the rationing will save more food. The problem is that when you get to the point where you have nine people, you're probably, in, once again, in a position where you've help. developed yourself. Let's see what our bonus is. Hey there, stranger. Roadside... Oh! Mm. Arrgh, roadside assistance! Let's use it right now, actually. Supply drops. Roadside assistance! You got it. Why, why so far away? Maybe it's just to demonstrate how good... Roadside assistance is roadside assistance is one of the best. Ooh, let's sell while we're here too. One of the best little supply drops you can get. I think we can help each other out. Ooh, 102 for the sanitary pads. I'll take it. Got anything for sale? Medicine. Eh, I'll take medicine. On your feet. I'll take medicine. Useful. You're looking to unload. But yeah, basically, by time rationing is becoming effective, like once you get to kind of eight people, because now you're saving eight food with rationing, and with eight food, now you're kind of, you're comparable to like um, a decently optimized hydroponics or a garden. The thing though is like by time you are able to get to eight people, you, on, especially on lethal zone, you've built up your base a good bit, and you could establish Four food outposts. Don't even level them up. Just leave them at level one. It's two food each. And so two food each would also cancel, basically be equal to eight food. So why inflict the morale penalty on yourself? Because 15 morale is absolutely, 15 morale is can be the deciding factor between being in uh, tier four, the final tier of morale, and one tier below. And you want to be in the maximum tier because everything is better. You EXP faster, uh, you build, you do actions faster, you do everything faster in, oh, and by the way, look at that. We just got two fuel and two uh, repair kits from for only 150 influence. Like that's what makes it so good. And I can call that an in again. In well, you know, the cooldown is pretty severe. Like every like 90 minutes basically. We have a little bit of cooldown, but it adds up. And if you have a way to reduce your cooldowns, you can do it way more frequently. The main point is on lethal zone. You use up so much fuel. Give me another way to get two fuel and two repair kits. I'll absolutely take it. For only 150 influence, that is a steal. Let's put these in here. And let's go ahead and search for that infestation. Might as well choke it out. You know, nip it in the bud, strangle it in its infancy. And so, you know, wh whatever, whatever is suitably macabre metaphor we have for it. But that's why rationing, it's not good. I don't recommend it. And I don't recommend optimizing around it. You know, you should either use a Super Waifu Cafeteria Squad. Remember, the Super Waifu Cafeteria Squad is easier than it has ever been in the past because you can use forever communities. The Super Waifu, a fully established Super Waifu Cafeteria Squad. Remember, it reduces the amount of food you eat by 75%, but with none of the penalties of other strategies. So, highly recommend it. If you don't want to go at that, there are other options. You can use Red Talon characters, the Forger, you know, your Gut Packers. They have ways to reduce the amount of food that you eat. Uh, they're not as flexible, though, because you are locked into those uh, fifth skills and any of the penalties they have. So, you know, it's not as flexible, whereas the Super Waifu Cafeteria Squad, you can give them any fifth skill you want because their power comes from a hero bonus. And amongst all the hero bonuses, it is one of the best. There are not a lot of hero bonuses that are going to compete. And that's why the kitchen, it's one of those things where it has more value. It is more valuable than the bunk room. It's more valuable than the, what do you call it, the watchtower, sure, but it's not that valuable. It's not that good. And that's why you don't really see me use it. 
you do not see me. It's it's and some people say, well, maybe you're sleeping on it. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't realize how awesome it is. I I really am not. In fact, on my Twitch playthrough, by the way, I you can find me on Twitch if you want to see more State of Decay gameplay. On Twitch, I recently did a playthrough where I used all of the unpopular skills that I just kind of don't ever use. See, like, right now, I'm just rolling through all these guys. Like, who cares if I'm... Look how... I'm not taking... I'm taking barely... I'm out of stamina right now, and it doesn't matter. I can escape just the same. I can set myself on fire, slam through these. I'm just going to, like, go back to my thing. You can use a pyro launcher to kind of escape. And I just, I didn't use any stamina items there. Some people might be like, oh god, I need to use a stamina item there. I don't need to, though, because, like, I, I've practiced it a bit, and if you copy my techniques, you're gonna find, now, I still, now, notice I still have a stamina item. I recommend you always keep one, just in case. But you're gonna find that you, you don't need to use them very much. And that's another reason why, you know, I don't use a nutritionist. And you might say, hey, Fox, you got a lot more practice than me. Well, that's a skill that you want to start working towards. Like, the better you get at the game, you can start using more good skills and less bad skills, essentially. Oh, what other buildings? So, those ones, mm, pfft, they just kind of stick. Then you got yourself a, um, the plumbing room. The, what do you call it? The, the level two latrine. Latrine is like, at, here's the thing. At this stage of the game, the latrine isn't very good anymore. The latrine was good in the very beginning of the game. If you wanted to, like, fix up your morale in the very beginning of the game, the latrine would be okay. If you're in the mid-game and you want to fix up your, you know, your morale with a latrine, maybe. Because at the mid-game, that's kind of when you can start getting into the lounge. The problem is that the latrine gives you 20 morale, but it consumes one small facility. And the thing is, you can do a lot more with one small facility than 20 morale. In the beginning, it's better. But as you develop, especially once you get, you know, any base that has two large facilities, you can go for that trade depot lounge combo. There we go. We get, we're looking for food right now as I go. I don't want to like, I, I want to make sure we're grabbing up some food because we need to keep those stills running. Time to move on. And that is, that's a big deal. Like in the beginning, sure, you know, you know, maybe you need some morale. No doubt about it. But later on, you're going to kind of... It's, it's just a skill that you kind of outgrow. And while... Okay, I'll agree that plumbing does have some decent benefits in turn. Oh, look at that. Swine and bovine right there. And basically, sure. The plumbing, when it's maxed out, it does give you some decent physical stats. I think it gives you like 20 stamina. Not bad. I'm not, I'm not even going to take that away from it. The, the issue, though is that so does the shooting range. The shooting range gives you, and you don't need, and the thing is, you don't need utilities. By needing utilities, you, that's another slot out of your, you know, the soft cap is nine, right? So that's another character out of your nine soft cap that is a specific, that, that is specifically kind of like, it's just an okay skill. You, could, you can outgrow it for sure. So the latrine, has its uses, but not at this stage of the game. This is too late in the game for it to really be a big power player. And that, once again, that is my problem with it. Like, I'm, I'm just expecting more out of the facilities. And that is the problem with this base, really. The problem with this base is that I... It, there are too many wasted facilities. It's as simple as that. Like, it's not, it, it has good points... Water and power, very accessible, very awesome if you are a brand new, you know, you're farming your boons. That's an example of when that's going to be a really great benefit. But then if you already have amenities, this base quickly loses its value. And you, you, you know, like why move into it when you can just stay in Weston? Weston, it only needs four people. Weston, uh, it only needs a thousand influence. Why go for the X? Why double the amount of people you need and over triple the amount of influence necessary to move? Oh, come on. I'll see you guys back at base. Okay, and we are back home. Of course, the un using the unstuck command is not a free command. You do lose fuel, so let's go ahead and slap some fuel in here. But anyways, to quickly conclude, this is a base that... It's either amazing or it's awful, 
and I mean awful is too strong for it. It's either amazing, it's either great, even amazing is kind of, well, and I'll say it's amazing. If you do not have amenities, this base is really, really good. If you do have amenities, complete skip. Totally pass on this base. Anyways, that's what I think. Tomorrow we're going to be heading over to the old Lumberoni, Lundergaard Lumber Mill, and then we'll also be getting New Hub Church. And then once we've built it up, I'll be reviewing Lundergaard Lumber Mill. So let me know down below, are you a fire department? Are you a Prescott Fire Station enthusiast? Are you an enjoyer of this base? If so, let me know. If you enjoyed this review, if it confirmed some biases or changed your mind about things, if you, if you got some value out of this, consider giving me a tip. It is the heart-shaped super thanks icon by the like dislike bar of course all donations absolutely optional i am a full-time creator though so that is how i make quite a bit of my cash it helps keep the fox republic running you can also get a five dollar a month channel membership look down there in the same area like dislike bar you'll see the join command just five dollars a month and you can help keep the fox republic running anyways let me know what you think about this base down in the comment section like the video if it was entertaining. Subscribe for future State of K2 content. Of course, remember that you don't have to be good to get good.